Small doses. Some help from the hip. Small doses. We're talking that shit. Small doses. And keeping it real. Small doses. With me and Nancy Seals. It's so funky. So funky. <laughs> Welcome, y'all, to another episode of Small Doses. And, uh, you know, we're in the Stu Stu studio with my home, home, home girl, Miss Melanie Fiona. Hello. Two nose earrings. You hear me? Is it a, wait, no, two nose rings. Two nose rings. Two nose rings. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've known that you had two nose rings. Oh. Did you always have two nose rings? Mm, I think you have a septum, right? No, I don't. Sometimes I have a septum. But no. The two nose rings have been around since... 2012 the things you don't notice things you don't but you know what i always notice the wing liner is never <laughs> she's always <laughs> <shy. Sick. laughs> the wing liner i wasn't is even always... gonna put mine on today and i was like <laughs> girl melody's coming you have to put on a wing liner i mean it, it you have to at least attempt the wing liner is uh, become a signature now yes i get compliments from makeup artists which is a it's when you hit a top tier of shinks on the wing liner before we get into the, mm -hmm. the topic of today, <laughs> what is the trick? Knowing your eyes. Really, it is knowing your eyes. I've been doing this since I was like 13, 14 years old. Oh, see, a lot and, of us just got on the wing and liner. And you've got to have the right wing liner tip. Don't be using the small, soft paintbrush to do this. You'll be in Q-tip heaven for the rest of the afternoon. Trying yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. Up. No, I've just mastered the, the wing line. And it, I, I know the like structure of how I want it to look. So someone told me you should do your your eye that's not your normal eye. So like if I'm right handed, I was told do your left eye first. I do always start with my left. That is true. Are you right handed? I am. Mm -hmm. So there's truth to this. There, I guess. Okay. I, I, maybe it's just because it builds confidence when you can do it on the good eye first. Because then the second eye is usually a struggle. I gave up on lashes for that reason. I can't stand lashes. Because I tried to put I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do my own makeup. And then I was like, but we can't do it can't do a lash a lash a lash i've just mastered the lash but i have to find the right lash that i like it can't just be going to like cbs or mac and just picking up any good old lash i have to find the right lash so trust and believe if you do my makeup as a makeup artist and you put on the right lash i'm taking them off washing them and keeping them for my own personal do you use. really absolutely wait you wash them yes what do you mean well like you could clean off the glue because if you get too much glue build up, then that's how your lashes don't stay What do you on. clean the glue off with? Eye makeup remover. Tweezers, pull them off, and then get a little Q-tip, do a little eye makeup remover. Not a whole tutorial. A whole tutorial. <laughs> okay, listen, when you don't have money on a budget, when you are a, a coming up artist in the world, you will learn how to do everything yourself. And I had to. I had to. Well, this is a good segue. <laughs> Here we go. This is a segue. A segue. Coming, you heard it, right? <laughs> we, we <laughs> the singing. There will be a harmonization. There will be, yes. Between the yes. and I, it's yes. happen. So, okay, side effects of integrity. Mm. Now, okay, when I asked Melanie, I was like, all right, what are, are there any topics that you have in your mind that you want to talk about? And she was like, she named a couple, but then side effects of integrity really stood out to me because I've honestly, I don't know why it's taken so long for us to even do a side effect of integrity because I really feel like I'm I, surprised. Yeah. We've never talked about this. I mean, I talk about, I think I talk about it in the mix of things mm -hmm. on a regular basis, but not like just specifically as it is. Like, what do you think, what do you define as integrity? Like when you, cause I feel like that's a moving target for a lot of people. I, I think it is. And I think it, it, it's subjective. I think for most, I mean, there is a definition of integrity, but I feel like for me, integrity comes from, it is the moral standing within myself in which I live. Um, that allows me to sleep peacefully at night, to mm -hmm. feel that I am operating as a good human being, that I'm in, you know, operating intentionally to do no harm, mm -hmm. um, that I'm uh, making my mama proud, maybe somewhere, somewhere in there. Um, those, those kind of boxes check for me. I, I feel like if it's something that I tend to think things for a very like long term, not necessarily okay. short term. Yeah. And so sometimes you think, oh, this might be good for the short term, but then you're like, ooh, in a few years, Is am I going to regret that? Thing? It might be. Because I'm the same way. I, you know, I don't want to look back in two years and be like, ugh, that was cringy. I'm, I'm still you know. proud of myself for not hosting a Love and Hip Hop reunion back when I was broke. I mean, <laughs> this is a perfect example. I once had an opportunity to do a show 
in which there was going to be some love and hip hop castmates involved. And there was a very wonderful check attached to it. And mm. I turned it down. And a lot of people on my team were like, I don't understand. Like, nobody's going to care. And I was like, I, I care. I care. I care. And now, mind you, like, in retrospect, I look back and I'm, sh- I'm sure I could have done the show, did the performance. Nobody would look at me and be like, you did a show. And that was with the and, you know, and nobody would probably care. But I cared at the time. And so I said no. You know, it's so funny because I think that a lot of people base their integrity on how other people will view them. And I think that's what makes it not really about integrity Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because integrity is like an internal thing. Yeah, I I, it didn't feel right. I didn't feel like I could stand by it. And that's kind of how I kind of rationalize any decision that I make. If I find myself at a crossroads, can I rationalize this to make sense for me? How can I rationalize it to make sense for me and not out of a place of desperation or survival? Because sometimes those are actual things that yes. are factors to be considered but you know really asking myself like what is what is it what what can I stand by in this moment to say yes or no that's kind of how I feel about it and you know in entertainment you get faced with a lot of that a lot when do you feel like you became like acutely aware that your integrity would be tested was there like a particular moment in your career where it was like Because I can tell you mine. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely identify it as kind of trying to break into the music industry. Um, I'm trying to even think back to even when I was younger in Toronto, fumbling my way through being in a girl group as a teenager, um, you know, standing up for myself in that right, saying, okay, I I no longer want to do this in this way, leaving that situation. Um, But I think definitely coming into the music industry in the States, like when I was pursuing a American, United States, recording contract, be a recording artist. Um, What was that decision? Oh, that decision was the opportunity presented itself and you jump when you're a Canadian artist because like you don't get that opportunity, right? So you jump. So as a Canadian artist, it's like a big deal to like come and be American. Mm -hmm. I I mean, back then, like over a decade ago, for sure. Yeah. Did Drake change that by any means? Absolutely. Okay. Drake definitely changed that. Because then what started to happen was is that people started to realize that there was talent to be noticing in Canada. I remember I would come into sessions in the States and people would be like, I didn't know people in Canada could sing like this. (laughs) And I thought that you guys, is it true you guys sleep with your doors open? No, fools, we don't. Like, it's- Why would, what? Because they just think that it's just this different, like square, like I've literally been told, oh, we just thought Canadians were square. We didn't think that Canadians had any sort of like sauce flavor or jewelry. But you're also not like a Canada Canadian. I mean, I'm Caribbean, but but the thing about it is Toronto is such a um, unique, a unique space and place. And unless you're from there, you don't really know if you visited for like Carabana, you will know. Yes. But if you've never done that, you might think that Toronto is just like "Hmm, it's like a watered down New York, you know. Okay. And, you know, it doesn't have as much edge, but it has lots of culture. It has lots of entertainment, lots of arts. But our music industry and our entertainment industry in general has um, historically been white. And if it wasn't rock and roll or hockey, it wasn't mainstream. And so, yeah. And so, you know, coming out of Canada and then being Caribbean, I had to explain that to people and like what that meant because people would be like, oh, well, what what is this? How can you be both? How can right. you be both? How can you be? It's cold. It's hot. You're Caribbean. Are you black? Oh, wait, but your dad is Indian. Wait, I, I don't understand. Guyana. Is that Ghana? Is that Guam? Where are you from? Wait, it's in South America. So you're Spanish. No. Um, <laughs> it's, a whole, it's a whole thing, right? So like coming into the spaces of having to one already try to get people to understand who you are. Mm-hmm. And so what you come with, it's just when I'm from where I'm from in Toronto, it's understood. I yeah. say I'm Guyanese and people are like, boom, I know who you are. I know how you grew up. So coming out here already culturally, that was very different being Caribbean, coming in, being Canadian into an American music industry, singing R&B. I didn't necessarily grow up in church. That was also another thing mm. when it came to R&B. So where'd you get all this soul from? Blah, blah, blah. It was like a whole thing. And so I remember coming in and I remember wanting to sing records i wanted to sing r&b records i grew up listening to the whitney houston's of the world the lauren hills the brandies wanting to sing r&b ballads you know what i mean like that's how i grew up and then coming down here and then people saying oh well like you're cute and you the, and you you sure you don't want to do like this type of music and like what you know like pop it up like pop it up and and poke it out 
and <laughs> sex it up and dumb it down. Yeah, it was it was all of that. And um, I remember being in tears sometimes, being like, I don't know who I am mm. in this space because mm. I'm trying to get people to see me for mm. me. And also, one, I'm still on a journey of figuring that out. And two, like, I also don't want to be dictated by some standard of something that I'm still learning about not even knowing if, like, I want to be, if right. that's my standard. Like, I don't, like, why can't it just be something else? And so, you know, one of the big feats that I had was when I first did It Kills Me, I remember going into record labels and people saying, nobody wants to hear anyone sing that well. What? Uh-huh. Yeah. I was told I Wait, sang. Nobody yeah. wants to hear anyone sing that, that well, well? R- right now in that in that time of music. But who was out at that time of music? I mean, like, and it's no shade to anyone else. Like, I mean, Ashanti was the huge pop, like R and B artist of that time, and mm-hmm. like the music was more hip hop driven. It was more pop driven. And, you know, I was in here trying to be like, can I sing like Whitney Houston off the top of a mountain right now? Like, yeah, Shanti was and Shanti you, ain't singing. Can you Whitney. give me a bridge? Can you give me? Can, can we, we have a, can a we bridge? bridge? Can we have a bridge? Where did where did bridges go? They are gone. They're gone. They did. Can we build a bridge to bridges? Hello. That's a I, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I really miss the bridge. The bridge was everything. A key change. A moment. Modulation. To get, modulation. Get get vulnerable. Um, it was, you know, it, it was a thing. And so I remember going into meetings and people being like, you're beautiful, you're young, like nobody wants to hear you sing that well or speak that well. And I just remember being like, you're too, opi- like too, opi- this is like, oh, five, this is like, oh, I mean, three, oh, four, oh, five. My first album came out in oh, nine. So this is like, oh, seven, oh, eight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm in it. Yeah. This is like, oh, eight. So, you know, it's, it's, it's that late two thousands and, you know, a lot of um, industry people at that time were, of course, it's it's capitalism. It's a business. They but want- they're never right. Yeah, no, they're that's not. That's the part for me that's always like resonates. Like mm-hmm. whenever you're seeing documentaries, like whenever you see people looking back, they're like, ah, I got it wrong. You know, like I missed it. And I just wonder like how this industry, well, the industry didn't stand. I mean, it's it's. it's flipped because Mm -hmm. artists were like you know what now we are able to determine right but I think there's something to be said for the fact though that like integrity is also you standing like you said it's you standing on what you know that you know about you Mm -hmm. even in the process of learning other things there's still certain truths that you hold to be self-evident that other people don't know or don't care about right and that they will think that you can just toss to the wind yeah no casually and it usually is for the sake of either money or fame yes And to be honest, I didn't know either. So for me, it wasn't like I was already living the dream leaving Canada. You know what I mean? So you're right. You picked the wrong I, one. It's like, I'm happy just to be I'm, here. I'm, I'm happy being humble. Okay, let's be I'm clear. I'm not on no Rogers I'm, Wi-Fi. No. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Rogers. Shout out to Rogers. I am happy to be here. Listen, I'm telling you, like, and 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 when I started to face those challenges, you know, I realized throughout my entire career, it was always about finding your people. That's what it was. And that was going to be my journey from then until today. Like that is, you have to find your people and not everybody's your people. And like, that's okay. And then you can decide what level of sacrifice, compromise of integrity that you might have to take if you want to be at another level at a different table with other people Mm. and you know fortunately for me I remember back with with it kills me I took that song to so many record labels and so many record labels were like wow this I mean you can sing but we're gonna pass and it was like oh but I don't get it like if it's so good right why don't you jump at this like if you don't see did they ever say why they were passing Besides, the, they just sing too well. They just didn't think that uh, a ballad would do well at radio um, at the time because of the literally. Ch- but OK, I mean, this has nothing to do with integrity, but I'm just thinking about that time. And it's like you have like a Shanti rain on me. Mm-hmm. You had I mean, I'm sure Mary had some type of ballad at that time. I think as a new artist, it was a too much of a risk. Oh, right. And they wanted you to come out like, yeah, I think they a, a, I think a. they wanted. And mind you, my actually my first single was Give It To Me Right, which was like a throwback of a zombie sample. It was more crossover. It had, you know, more of this like throwback feel, which was doing well at the time that had like doo-wop feel. But 
it kills me was like this mammoth of uh, R and B. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's it, a strong, it's a strong, R, it's an authentic, correct R and B, a word association with integrity. I I like, yes. um, and you know, and then I met Steve Rifkin, and Steve Rifkin, um, at SRC Records brought me into his office, and he heard the record, and he played it thirteen times in a row, and he offered me a record deal that day, and that was the beginning of understanding that what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be, how I wanted to be seen and represented, what I wanted to be recognized or respected for would be honored there. I mean, this is the same person that signed the Wu-Tang. I mean, yeah. <laughs> same person. So, <laughs> loves hip hop, loves big ballads, apparently. There you go. Um, and you know, and I, I forever have such a deep, you know, respect and love and reverence for Steve for that because I felt like he saw me for what it was that, who I was and what I was, excuse me, wanting to represent at that time in music. Do you remember what, what that was at that time? And has it changed? Um, I think I've become more comfortable. I think in, when I say, when you say, has it changed? I feel like I've become more comfortable in, I feel like back then maybe per se, I was more concerned about what people might think Mm -hmm. too. Um, And so when I found someone who was like, oh yes, you can sing like this and that's wonderful. I could be like, I can stand on the merit that I can sing. You know, now I think as I've evolved as an artist and as a creative, I'm I've been beholden to being just a singer. So when I say I've changed, I feel like I can expand and I don't feel bad about expanding anymore. Before it was like I had to prove that I was this one thing Mm -hmm. and really good at this one thing. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh, I could be good at multiple things. And like, you know, even talking about makeup as we started. I remember once I was at your house and we were in your backyard. Estelle was there and I was getting ready to go to an event and I was putting on makeup, doing my makeup in your (laughs) backyard. And you guys were like, you could do makeup really well. Alice Smith was there yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And you were like, you guys, you could do makeup so well. Like, why are you not doing And they were like, you should show people that you can do this. I was like, oh, I'm not a YouTube influencer. And Estelle looked at me and she was just like, baby, show all of what you can do. Don't let other people put that on you. Yeah. And that was, you know, a thing that I think I had to break out of. So when I say that, I think I've grown to honor the integrity of actually who I am multifaceted more so than just caring about what people might think like, Oh, well, she's just an influencer now. Mm, no, I'm just a creative and I just do what I want, but it's not fair how that word has like I know. infiltrated I know, I know. the multi hyphenatism of, of, of multi create of multi yeah. of creatives of multifaceted creatives. I mean, like, it's like, are you surprised that Amanda can paint? I'm not. <laughs> Thank you. Are you. I'm so are you surprised. I mean, I'm still surprised. You have a million and one talents, but like, but like I designed this logo. I, case in point, somebody gets hired to do this because I know I can't sketch a thing, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I can make a candle. <laughs> you can make candles. I can make candles. I brought one for you. It's in the car. <laughs> Um, there's a candle uh, there's a candle but you know what I'm saying like I it, it's very interesting so when I think about that and I go back to that Steve Rifkin place and I think about this song that everybody was like mm, this is never gonna work at radio and that went on to become a number one record for nine weeks that went on to earn me two Grammy nominations out the gate like I just feel like that's when I get to stand even though I didn't win the Grammys I get I, I got to say oh yeah like you 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 didn't jump at the first person who was like we like you. That's We're going to the leave these songs. We don't, you know, we'll take you in this. Dr- no, I went in and that label was like, what are the songs you have? We played them the songs. So many of them had old hip hop samples. Some of them had old rock samples, soul samples, pop samples. The music was so diverse on the first album that I really was like, I feel connected to all of this because yeah. this is who I am. This is where I come from. Right. I grew up listening to all these types of things. Like we didn't have urban radio. We didn't have R&B radio in Canada. Urban. I used to have to listen to like Ace of Bass and then Bob Marley right after Ace that. Ace of <laughs> Bass. You know. I you was know, a you big know. fan of big, Ace of Bass. Big Bays. fan of Ace of Bass. Okay. So, you know, like the, 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 the spectrum of what I grew I up listening to. I saw the sign. sign. Mm-hmm. And, and I opened my <laughs> Listen, them Swedish. They were Swedish. Yes, they were Swedish. Yeah. Good Scott. Do, 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 do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, records. There were records. There were records. I have like a actual Ace of Base CD. Listen, somewhere. I my first cassette that I remember getting on a Walkman was Rick Astley. Okay, never gonna give you up. Hey, never gonna let, let you down. down. Okay, I was listening to these songs, so that's why when I came and people were like, "No, you have to fit into this box," I was like, "It." 
They were big on the boxes. Oh, big on the boxes. I remember I was trying to do my thing with music and they were just so big on like, no, you can't sing and rap. You need to choose like this. And, and, you know, in hindsight, I'm like, Lauren had done that in 99. No, when was, when did, uh, yeah, 99. No, Lauren had done that in 99 and y'all are coming here five years later to say it can't be done. Like I too remember doing a tour with, um, a, uh, organization, uh, that was affiliated with it. And I remember loving this tour and I was on tour and with another R&B artist who was definitely established more in the R&B space. Mm-hmm. And I came out and I remember doing my songs off my first album and I would do rock steady as I would do two covers in the show. One was rock steady mm-hmm. by Aretha Franklin. And mm-hmm. the other was ironic by Alanis Morissette. Okay. And it, don't you think and the audience loved this? Like it, and it didn't matter what I could, because we in all know Alabama, they're singing. It's like, rain. like they're oh, in it. And everybody loves this song. And I remember my management came to me at the time and told me that there was feedback. <gasps> There was feedback from someone uh, who was saying that uh, they weren't necessarily, didn't feel that the show was aligned. And I was like, feedback is a code word for hateration. I was like, in the dancery. In in this dancery. And I was like, wait a second. Like, everyone's having a good time. I'm killing it on stage. I'm singing my ass off. Who in the world, in the what, like, what, why do you have a problem with this alternative approach to R&B because you know who you were putting on tour when we signed up. And well, we you're did also this. not singing it. You're singing it in an R&B like vibe. It's not like you're singing it like this is when I put on my white girl voice. <laughs> like, and you're Canadian. And isn't Alanis Canadian? Absolutely. So shout out to the, the Canadian lead. Alanis Morissette. I li- I li- I, these are some of the things that I have faced. And I remember I'm like, I'm not changing it. I'm going to sing this thing and I'm going to do it. It's always somebody. It's always somebody talking and smiling in your face, though. That's the thing. But that's when I feel like the integrity is tested, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because it's so easy to shift for ease, you Ugh. know? It, like, it's tempting. It's very tempting to shift for ease. It's very tempting, or for even what you think will be ease. Yeah. Because I think, like, even when you're talking about career-wise, that there were... These people throwing to you like, oh, throwing you a bone. Like, okay, well, if you do this, so you'll pop off. Or if you do this, you'll pop right. off. But even that is not guaranteed. Right. No. It's never guaranteed, but it always feels like people are so willing to undermine, like, what you stand on, your values. Because really, your integrity is built up of your values, your morals, your ethics. Like, that's what you are showing up as. And as an artist, like, you decide, like, this is what my... This is what I'm giving to the world and it's a full representation of me. And I feel like when people, I've never seen it work when people forsake that. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it work long term. Like they always, and and even if it did, like I guess money wise, you always end up hearing a story about how their soul didn't feel fulfilled, Fulfilled. their spirit. I mean, how does this show up then like outside of work? Like how do you feel like your integrity, here we go, how do you feel like your integrity has shown up in your relationship? Mm. Because you're a mom now. Mm. You got two children. I got two whole children. You have yes. two children. I have two children and a dog. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> two children and a dog. And you couldn't have told me I would have had the latter two at all. Like, I was good with one kid. Like, and You just really have two children and, and a dog. dog. And I think it's and important that we add <laughs> the dog. Because people don't understand that a dog is another version of a child. Let's be clear. I just travel through the holidays with all three of my children, including the dog. <laughs> what kind of dog? A French bulldog. Oh, yeah, that's a job. He's the best. He's like, he's really great. Also, we were talking briefly about it. He also tried to run away on the weekend of Halloween and ran into traffic and almost killed us both several times. And I was in traffic trying to stop this dog from getting run over by a car because I didn't have the, I was just thinking about going home and telling my six-year-old that his son got, that his dog got hit by a car. Oh, like, and I'm, this Cam. Yeah, not Cam. We can't tell Cam. Not Cam. Oh, God, Cam. The salt of the earth, Cam. So, oh yeah, so, so, you know, it's like, it's a crazy thing. So the integrity of that, again, to bring it back to what you were asking, shows up, um, you know, I have people watching me now. I've got little minds, impressionable minds watching me, how I deal with conflict in the world, how I speak to their father, how, you know, I'm not just talking to him like it's me and him, how we, it's, it's all of it. It's how. So wait, has that been like a conscious shift that you guys made or did it just like, 
we're we're pretty respectful, but my son is very sensitive to um <laughs> let's put it this way. My son does not like high energy situations as far as like he will be like He's a Pisces. He's a Pisces. Yes. Yeah. He, I, he will, I understand. <laughs> he will be He'll be like, why are you guys like if we're talking about anything passionately, we're not even fighting about a disagreement. Why are you guys fighting and yelling at you? No, we're not yelling, Betty. We're just talking. And, you know, I live with a Pisces. Oh, so mm-hmm. I understand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're very because the anything that ripples the water. Listen, they don't want any ripples don't. in the water. But we're crabs. So we're like we're water. We're land dancy. <laughs> we're dancing on. We're dancing on the sand. We're in the grit. And then we're getting clean in the water. <laughs> We're in our shell. We're in our shell. We're like, oh, and then we're oh, you want to fight? Ready? It's beautiful. It matches. Yes, it's intentional. Yes, I like it. <laughs> um, so that's interesting because I don't think enough people think about that when they have kids. Like, mm. I don't think enough people are like, okay, where is my integrity showing up now in mm-hmm. this setting? Yeah, because uh, I mean, I just saw a video of like a a, a child in a pull up. So, but that was a five-year-old. So we're already, this is going to be like a four to five-year-old outside in the um, common area of their uh, apartment built complex with a loaded gun. I thought the pull-up was going to be the worst part of this at five years old. Yeah. And so, you know, people were like, of course, like this is negligent, et cetera, et cetera. But like when we talk about parenting, it's yeah. like any, I saw a video of a baby the other day, like two years old playing with their, their little puppy and the puppy w- like they were like playing too hard with the puppy and the puppy like nipped it. Mm-hmm. And then the baby like was like, ah, and picked up the puppy and bit the puppy. <laughs> sorry. It's not funny. Yeah. Because someone's video, a parent is taping this. Oh, oh, no, that's ridiculous. No, the fact that it's up, I just think it's hilarious. Just because kids, I'm only laughing because I have kids and they be doing some wild. But I'm just like, the parent never put the camera down. The parent posted this. I'm like, Hi. okay, now, okay, now this is a, now this is a different, this is a different world that we live in because you will see some traumatic, absurd things that people will put out about their families for clout for views to go viral thinking it's going to be this life-changing thing but it's like no you're always going to be known as that person that didn't put the camera down you know so it's like i mean that's i mean i I don't want to say mm, the word judgment is hard when you bring it up but i will say that for example i had something that was presented to me in the space with my children a campaign that was possibly presented and I had to think about it. The check was a wonderful check. I had to turn it down because it involved the likeness and the involvement of my children. And I had to think about would my children like this and appreciate this 10 years from now, 12 years from now, 20 years from now. We're living in such a time right now where everything lives forever if if you want it to. And I have to think about those decisions for my children Mm -hmm. as well now. So it's like not just making decisions for myself, I also, again, too, feel like my children are watching. So anything that I'm going to do for myself, I want to be able to confidently turn to my children and be like, this is why I did this. And I can stand 10 toes down and feel good about that and have the understanding with my children more so than, yo, mom, 10 years ago, they really f***ed me up. And I'm not saying that, like, that is, you know, we're not supposed to have grace as parents. Like, we're also just people trying to figure it out. So I also, too, have grace for people. But me personally, I really do try to think from a place of mindfulness when I am making decisions for myself, my family. Where do you think that came from? Um, like, are your, do you feel like your parents were really like heavy on the integrity? Yes, but my parents were also very heavy on the judgment because well, they're West they Indian. were West Indian. Yeah, they're West Indian. <laughs> we're both like, <laughs> right? Well, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, and so I think that that's really what it came from. It was always like, what are your neighbors going to think? What are your so-and-so going to think? Mm. What are your so-and-so? You know, it was all of those things. I think that gave me a level of foundation. It was fearful of like disappointing people yeah. or being judged. Yeah. But I think once I unlearned that, it became about how do you own. feel about, what's yeah. your own moral barometer? Like, how do you feel about this, Melanie, the person? Because you have to live with your choices. Absolutely. And I think that's a thing. I, I really kind of feel like that ends up being the crux of this whole integrity thing. Mm-hmm. Are you somebody who even examines your choices? Mm. Right? Because people is out here just sociopaths. Just, just, just living. Willy, 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 willy. willy. <laughs> Yeah, just like whatever happens, happens. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, okay, but 
you know, I, my therapist had told me once, she was like, the difference between um, your partner now and the previous partner you were with is that the person you were with, well, the person you're with now makes decisions to make their life better. Mm. The person you were with makes decisions to make themselves feel better. And I think that's a really other good way to like package integrity up because when you move from a place of integrity, it doesn't always feel like it doesn't always serve you in the moment. No, no. <laughs> like, so, you know, I mean, we've all had moments like if you live in that mindset, you've all had moments where you're just like, these morals. Yes. Ah! Yes. Yes. You're like I gotta pay for these children's college three times over. Girl, listen, I had to be like, thank you, no, thank you, and then go like, all right, now go think about how you're going to. But what I do truly believe, and that I and I've seen this, I've been witness to this, and I feel like if you are connected to faith within yourself, spirituality of any kind, karma, whatever it is that you hold true to hold to be true to you, and your set of values and morals, I feel like the universe does reward. Mm. You. you do you really believe this I do believe this I have do. you experienced this? I have experienced this I like for example I can tell you times where I turned down a number of a, a check at a particular number and then three other opportunities came up to amount to that check mm. so I feel like you know there's there's things for example I will also relate it back to um something after I had my daughter I got asked to do a Right after I had my daughter, several things came up, opportunities came up where I had to be on camera. I was feeling terrible about the way I felt about my body after I had my daughter. It was such a drastic- Was it different than from Cam? Oh, completely different from Cam. Like, I, I put on more weight after I had the baby than when I was pregnant. It was very bizarre. And then it's I was just like by happenstance, like I don't know how it just, works. We just, it, <laughs> I don't know how it works, <laughs> girl. If I knew how it works too, it I don't know happen. because I feel like everyone I know that has these kids, like y'all, each have a I had no idea story, girl. I had no idea, and I did it <laughs> already, and then I didn't know it. Could be, <laughs> and it I didn't know it could be any different. And when I and when I tell you that, like there were so many days where I was like, I can't do that because I w don't want to see myself on camera look like that, and. I literally had to be like, that is not who you are. Mm. That is not who you are. You think so? Oh, absolutely. Like, what do you no, mean? No, I'm not who like, you are. That's not who you are. Like, you are not this shell of a body that is here representing a physical appearance. Like, you mm. are a spirit and a sage and a soul that has wisdom to share. So you have to show up and be who you are, despite Regardless. how you feel and look right now. So, like. That was also a moment of integrity. It was just like, are you going to be hypocritical to what you preach to everyone You felt else? like it was shallow? I felt like it was very shallow of myself to feel that way. It was honest, yeah. but I felt like had yeah. I hidden, it would have been so superficial and short-sighted. and short -sighted. Did you speak about it in those, did you have the opportunity to even speak about it like in those spaces? One of the spaces I did, and it was speaking about the surrendering of motherhood. And it's interesting because when I looked at that clip and I had to share it, and I will, I, I don't mind sharing, it was with um, Natalie uh, Manuel Lee in mm -hmm. her, she was doing um, her, um, her conversations Gula that she does. And she, you know, it, the, the conversations were so meaningful that she was having with all these different people and she'd asked me to go there and the conversation was about motherhood and I was like am I not going to show up to speak about this passion to speak about this purpose that yeah. I have this community that I'm building to inspire and share your truth and your vulnerability because I'm feeling self-conscious right now and I'm like oh no where is your integrity for what your purpose and what it is you're supposed to be doing okay and okay. so okay. that's how I showed up that day I had to literally come back to you cannot, you cannot be out here encouraging women and mothers to love themselves at every stage and stand in their truth. And you out here, <laughs> your, your truth is you just really don't have anything to wear. So go and say it. So go and say, you don't have anything to wear because nothing fits here, but I'm still here. I don't feel comfortable today, but I'm still here, you know? And I think that that's the truth when you're I don't being feel comfortable today, but, but I'm, I'm still, still here, here, you know? And I, and, and being honest in that. Being honest in that, you know, when I showed up today and I said, yo, how are you? You were like, I'm stressed. And I was like, yeah, I feel it. I got you. You know, I think you also reach an age where you're just like, ah, I don't have. I don't have. I'm just saying what it is now. I don't, you know, no, this doesn't align. Sorry, I can't. I'm just, uh, you know, so. I, so I think that to in, 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 in growth and in changing more in honoring integrity, I feel like at, at a certain point, at certain points in my life and for a lot of, I think, my youth. 
I was definitely in a space of people pleasing. And so that was, I didn't want to rock the boat. I didn't want to upset anybody. I don't want to, Mm -hmm. but now I'm just like, it's okay to like, the integrity comes from no thanks. And you can say no thank you if you want to be The power of no. Suzanne DePass, who discovered uh, Michael Jackson Mm -hmm. and the Jackson 5 and who won an Oscar for screenwriting, you know, she once told me, she was like, the most powerful word you have in this business is no. Because otherwise, if you're afraid to say no, you can be taken down any road, any path, and left, right? And And left. left. And um, there's been so many times in my career where I just feel like, People were so casual about their integrity that it like astonished me. <laughs> like, and like, I remember I had a rapper who like the night of his bachelor party, I didn't know it was his bachelor party, right. but I had like texted him. I was like, oh, I'm in your city. This is back when I thought that rappers were like my friends and that they weren't like, <laughs> always trying to smash. <laughs> yeah. Like, I thought we were homies. I thought we were homies. Yeah. I'm a homie. Oh. And so I like texted him. I was like, hey, I'm in your city. would love to like, you mm-hmm. know, show me around. Mm-hmm. And he was like, um, I want to see. On- and I and I was like, I think you meant to send that to someone <laughs> else. <laughs> like, on my T-Mobile sidekick. I was like, no, I think you meant to send that to someone no. else. And he was like, nah, I'm at my bachelor party right now. And I'm like, you're at, you're, you're getting married. married. And he's like, I'm drunk, but I meant what I said. And I was like, that, well, that was the day, though, that I really realized, like, oh, like, this thing you're in, this business you're in, like these people are not all coming from where you're coming from. Oh no. Like, no. because I remember crying. I remember calling Q-Tip the next day and crying oh, and being okay. like, so and so sad. Da, 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 da. And he was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> not that Q-Tip voice. <laughs> yeah, you know. But I remember he like, I remember being at, at Lotus. Oh, shout out to Lotus. On my New Yorkers. On your New Yorks. I was at Lotus once and I was about to do Smooth Magazine. <laughs> real, real classy smooth. Tings. Not king. Not, not king. even king. Smooth. Smooth. Okay. Mm-hmm. Red letters. Smooth. And they had really convinced me, like, we can do this classy. Yep. We can do this classy. Because yep. I was like, I don't even have to be like out here. Right. I don't gotta like I'm right. shaped like an iPhone, okay? <laughs> I am proportionate. I am sleek lines and rounded edges. <laughs> so like there's there's not a lot here to put on display. So they told me that I could make this real classy. So I was like, okay, fine. If okay. we can, then we will. Right. And then I walk into Lotus and the editor of the magazine was there. And he was like, we're excited about the shoot. Looking forward to it. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm excited. He's like, you know, if you show your ass, I'll give you the cover. In my head also like, what? Like, I'm a little bulky. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bulky. He said, I want the cakes. The cakes, like, the cakes on the covers. He wanted the cakes. You know what it is, though? I think. But, when, but wait, but when I said to him, nah, I'm good, good. he was like, why? Yeah. Like, why would you be good with that? Yeah. I'm going to give you the cover of the magazine, and all you got to do is show your ass. Like, what's, what, what, you're missing out. You could be a star. I and am, I was like, nah, I am a star in yeah. my head, by the way. You, not with the booty. Not though. with the booty. That's not going to be the thing that makes me a star. But this, so this is exactly it. Exactly. You knew that's not going to be the thing that's going to make me a star. It's going to get me the cover, but it's not going to make me a star. And that's why. It and comes- we want to be clear not to shade anybody using their booty to be a star. Okay. I just mean correct. that this wasn't In my your truth. moment. But it wasn't my truth. You got to live your truth. That, and that's exactly it. You were like, this is not the thing that's going to make me a star. So <laughs> I don't got a star booty. I, I, you got to know. <laughs> know your booty's power but you, you know, know what but you know what the, it's interesting is that it, whoever that gentleman was <laughs> um you know it, it's almost like and this is the thing that bothers me underneath all of that it's like it's almost like there's a there's a power trip there to be able to get you to do that oh yes which he was makes, shocked yes which makes him be like wait a second like i know she didn't come here to do this but if i could make her like look what? at me look at me like i got it done like what no i it, th- I to, back to integrities and relationships. I'll never forget. I had someone in the industry ask me to pretend to be their girlfriend. Ooh, to a show to arrive with them. I've also had the same offer. Places. I wonder if it's by the same person. Girl, <laughs> it might be. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but he really called me one day, and I thought we were cool. Like I thought we were like cool because we actually connected on a very like cool level. And 
he was like, yeah, I was just wondering if you would show up to me with this. And, and I was like, like, did he think that it was a weird ask? Like, he didn't think it was weird. He thought he knew exactly what he was doing. Like, he was like, did he get somebody else to do it? Uh... He did start dating someone after that, but they were consistently dating. So, okay. I, do, so okay. I don't know if that's how it began. But I absolutely said no. And he was like... What was his reasoning? He just wanted to like look... J- it's just, again, in this game, it as we've seen, people will date people, show up with people because it sparks conversation. It sparks interest. If you're too mysterious, they don't know who your type is and what it is and... You know I mean, the like, back- I'm a catch. I know why he want to show up with me. I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, I'm like, my thing was, I don't know if I want to step out with you. Right. Like, if you're calling me and asking me to do this, it already says something about you. Like, I'm like, I'm not willing to play. And the thing about it is, is that on a one-on-one, we were so cool. So I was shocked that he was even willing to consider that as a tool in his marketing yes. But you see, this, 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 just a side note, the side effect of this is that when you do have integrity, the side effect of this is that it makes people think that everybody operates like this. Yes. So that when you don't operate like this, they don't believe you. They don't believe you. Like, I get a lot of people that simply just, like, don't believe me about, like, things I'm saying simply because they're like, well, so-and-so faked it and so-and-so lied about this or so-and-so, you know, exaggerated yeah. on this, et cetera. So why would you be telling the truth? Right. But I really feel like the integrity thing It'll it'll show up for y'all. It'll it'll just show up in so many different instances. And you just get tried and tried. And whenever they're like, oh, God is testing you. It's like, yeah, like you're getting tested all the time Mm -hmm. in. Do you really mean what you say? Say. Like, are you really walking the talking, the talking that you're talking? Because they will pull a receipt on you quick, ma'am. Today, they will pull a receipt on you quick, quick. I can't believe so you were asked yes to be the fake GF and I also was in a relationship for three years with someone who was a known person and no one knew and that's how I know who the person is yes okay now and that's how I in that's how (laughs) integrity integral I was because I didn't want media talking about my relationship Mm. I wanted to protect that with everything that I had I was just so like, I don't want to be known as the girl dating this person. I just wanted to have. So when someone comes to me and is like, you want to fake a relationship with me? I'm like, I am a lover. (laughs) I do not play games with my love and my public facing affections. Absolutely not. Do you feel like in being someone of integrity that you've had people maybe feel like you were judgmental of them for not going along with their shenanigans. I'll give an example. Mm-hmm. So like I had a homeboy who was dating somebody and I knew, I didn't know her, but I like we'd met, like they're dating. Mm-hmm. So we've met before. And um, he showed up at my house one day. And like you said, like we are cool, cool. Yeah, like this yeah. is my dog. He showed up at my house one day with a bouquet. Hmm. I thought he was on his way to her house mm-hmm. and just like popped by because we lived like pretty close to each other. And he was like, you know, I've just been really thinking about it. And I really, I, I, I with you and I would love to have the opportunity to, to be with you. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, you have a whole chick up the block. Yeah, you have a whole chick up the block. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, you know, if you were interested, then I would stop that relationship and, you know, and pursue you. And I was like, what type of broad do I look like Mm. if I accept this? Yeah. Because that should be very telling to you about who I am. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, then that means that you're like judging me for me even asking you. I was like, yes, yes, I am. Yeah. But then, you know, there's this idea of like, don't be judgmental, don't be judgmental. And listen, I feel like in certain scenarios, judgment has no place, right? Like if you're going to reach out to somebody who's just had a loss or trauma, et cetera, like leave judgment aside if you're going to do it, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. In this situation, though, I'm like, I got to judge you because I got to make a judgment call on who I have around me. Mm. And I only want people around me that have a high level of integrity. And I, apparently, like, there's per- certain personality types that are like this, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's just because I want 
like them to keep me honest. But I think it's also just like it's a it's a vibe. It's an energy thing. It's a yeah. vibration thing. Right. Yeah. And I've had men say to me, I can't be with you. I can't date you because you have too much integrity. Mm. And I don't got all of that. And I don't want to keep feeling bad about myself. <laughs> Yikes. In the reflection of your efforts at ethics. Mm. 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 Did I still pursue them? Of course I did. <laughs> I no. said I had integrity, but not emotional intelligence. Not emotional intelligence. <laughs> I mean, I do now. I do now. But, but I was once a smart woman, dumb girl. You know, bum, bum. You're so funny. You know what? You know what's so funny about that <laughs> is that even back to that scenario that you just brought up, like there's just this like romanticism mm. what grand gesture this is what movies are made of yes. you showed up at my door with flowers to tell me it is you not her <laughs> oh yes this is what i've been waiting for yes. except no negro you look mad crazy right now because i've never given you any indication that i'm interested in you in this no way rhythm no i've never given you this rhythm <sighs> oh, tricky, but tricky. felt but fe but and so we actually ended up falling out like as friends because later he told me that mm. he had dated some he was dating a woman and he told her you know my he said was like basically he said that he was dating her while his life was in shambles and three months into dating her she was like what are we doing because like i'm trying to like mm -hmm. lock this in and he was like well i told you from the beginning that my life is in shambles and i was like okay so here's the thing if you knew that you didn't have the capability to actually get into something real, why did you even go along that road? Well, I told her from the beginning, so she made the choice. And I just feel like when people do that, they're not operating from their own place of integrity because you're literally trying to say that it's somebody else's, it's, it's somebody else's responsibility to, to let you or not let you do some fuck shit. Mm. And it is it like, listen, people will only do to you what you let, let them. them. Yeah. But you as a person in control of you also should make the decision of not to do if you don't have to. But clearly he said his life was in shambles. Therefore, he's going to do some. Well, yes. And then he was like, you know, <laughs> why do I have to be? Why do I have to be responsible? Everybody mm. else gets a chance to be selfish. Why can't I be selfish? Welcome to the work you have to do. Congratulations. Call your therapist. I was like that statement alone. I don't like that. Yeah. Statement alone. The statement. Like, you sound like a f you sound alone. like a f boy. And we can't have that. Mm. And I think the integrity that I like to see that I, the, I think the integrity that I really am enjoy seeing in like particularly black men on these like black men heal pages or black men therapy pages or like the pivot podcast is just this idea of like masculinity not being attached to like how strong I am like in brawn, but like my accountability and like the integrity and honor that I show up with as a person. Yes. Whether I have it or not. Right. I mean, you ever see these like shows? It's like if a, if there was like no one watching, who would you be in the situation? And that is like a real thing. Like, are you the person that like steps over the person asking for help? Are you mm. the person that turns the blind eye to something that you like? It just and I think that that's a good gauge for yourself. It's like, how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel about that? Like, would you feel good? Like, I if I see a girl get into a fight with her man. In the in the grocery store, at the, but like I don't want to be involved in your business, but I'm definitely gonna be like, are you good? Do you? We're need the same help? person. Do you need help? Like because I'm minding my business, but also you're in front of me. Also you're in front of me, <laughs> and I can't unsee you. In a, I have in broken a, up three different domestic violence situations in New I'm, York. But you see that. But so this is what I'm saying. Like, how would you have felt had you left and been like? I mean, I would go home and probably lament over it all day. Like, did I, did, did I, I do what I, she okay? Yeah. Like, is she okay? Like, did, but then did, you have a lot of people do anything, who are though. like, well, you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't say anything because it's none of your business. I mean, that's why I always say like, we are each other's business. Yeah. Cause I really mean that. If I hear somebody talking to a kid crazy in the store, like I remember being in Harlem and like, I heard from like three rows over this woman, like quit touching, just screaming, mm -hmm. screaming at a child. And when I finally saw the child, this was a two-year-old. Hmm. And it was like, why do you think this two-year-old is not going to touch things? Right. It's a two-year-old. Yeah. And you don't, it's not even like you have her in a stroller where you can like confine right, her. Right, right. And I was like, you know, she's two, right? Like I could see she's two. And she was like, my job. business. <laughs> and I was like, if you want me to mind my business, then you need to speak lower. We in this little sea town. Ooh.
And it's my business because you made it my business. Mm -hmm, Cause mm -hmm. you in here hollering at the top of your mm -hmm, lungs. Mm -hmm. And I don't expect everybody to do that, but I think integrity just shows up in a myriad of different ways. Absolutely. I th and I think that that's, I think that's the thing is that we, I mean, we've talked about integrity from professional to dating relationships, boys, domestic situations. <laughs> like it in just, it, you can literally, and again, it, I think it is personal. I think you have to know what your moral compass is. You have to know what lives inside of you. Like for example, like if you to save someone from a domestic situation, domestic violence situation, and you did or didn't, and something was calling you to, and it was like, you're like, my moral compass is like, I have to make somebody, she needs help. And you yeah. left. You would be like, I went universe. against myself. Yes. I went against myself. And I, was, I would literally you, feel like we were now in an alternate reality. reality. <laughs> right. Like, but it, what would have happened? But if, you, but if somebody told you, I'm good, I got it, and you did your part. No, then you did you your did part. You did your part, right? But I think that, and, and again, this is just one very specific instance but I think it's when you feel that call to act say no stand up sit down whatever it is do you respond to that inner compass that calls you in that moment when you have when there is a decision to be made and I think that that is really important um when it comes to I think understanding what your purpose is I think in life yeah I think that it's easier to tap into that when you understand what your purpose is yeah. in life. When I was four years old, I said I wanted to be a singing nurse. Don't, okay. Okay. All right. there, there is just no doubt in my mind that that four-year-old knew you're going to make some music and you're going to bring some healing. <laughs> yeah. End of story. So I know for myself that there is this calling in me that is focused on the good feeling. Mm -hmm. The good feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm -hmm. I want to feel that and I want other people to feel that as well. And I have to feel that, especially in my life right now, it, 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 that's just how it has to feel good. So my last question for those who are listening and who, well, let me frame it like this. I've always felt that my journey, my climb was going to take longer because I was carrying my integrity with me. Mm -hmm. I've always felt that, that my climb would be longer because I'm carrying my integrity with me. Yes. And there were many times like on that climb that I needed not even like encouragement to stay in, in possession of my integrity, but just encouragement to stay in pursuit of the, of the purpose, right? What would you say to folks who feel just like, why am I here? Cause it's even become more direct. Like, why am I here? Like sticking to my guns when I'm seeing so many people like excel or, you know, breeze past me who clearly are just doing whatever is told to them. Yeah. It's a challenge. It's a challenge every day, especially in a world of social media. You see the seemingly perfect stories. Highlight real highlights. Thank you of everyone's triumphs, you know, and, and not the struggles of necessarily what got you there. And I think that, um, I think that there is, I think that there's peace. <laughs> I think that, that mm. you need to ask yourself if your what is your peace worth, you know? Um, and ask mm. yourself, you know, like which ways are you willing to bend without breaking? Like there's, I think there's, I, like yeah, I said, like at the it's, beginning, not just a, it's not just black and white. And I think it's individual for everybody, you know, and ask yourself, like, is your moral compass based off of what other people will think or what you will think about yourself? But I think that you have to get in touch with self. You have to really do work to know yourself. Um, me, my spiritual compass keeps me going. So I definitely lean on the, the feeling of does this sit right with me, my ancestors, <laughs> you know what <laughs> my I mean? Cheering. My children. Like, am I, am I going to have to answer to something higher than me in making decisions for myself right now? And I mean, I think we always do, but I, I'm talking on a case by case basis. Um, and yeah, the integrity is heavy, but so is the crown. You know, so I just mm. feel like the integrity is heavy and so is the crown, you know, and you just decide what your crown looks like, you know, because the person who's out there with the highlight reel wearing their crown, they probably got. 
they're struggling with as yeah. well behind closed doors. And it's not all glitz and glam. And maybe they don't have the grounding or the accountability for self or anybody who's checking for them to be like, hey, you good? Like, I saw you did this thing. Like, that didn't really feel like it was you. Yeah. I mean, you're real people. Yeah. Not the comment people in the comments. No. The people who know you and you trust and feel safe with. And I think that those are the most important people in my life. Like, I don't keep a very large group of people I call friends. I have my folks that I love and trust. And I, I feel very fortunate, to be honest, personally, to be in a place right now where I feel very much in control of my integrity. I don't feel like I have too many voices, opinions, you know, in a space right now. Growth. The growth, you know, and I had to shed people and mm. chapters of my life in order to get there with grace and forgiveness, even when it wasn't asked for. So, you know, I think that um, I think that you just have to get you have to get in touch you have to really know whoever's listening and whoever needs it. You really need to know my gauges. Can I sleep with this and wake up and feel good when I look at myself in the mirror the next morning? Can I sleep comfortably at night? Am I peacefully sleeping, resting, knowing that I caused no harm to anybody and I did what it was that I felt called to do for my personal self and growth? That would be it. Ba-dum-ba! Ba-dum-ba! Ba-dum-ba!